The Almighty Raisin is an extremely old and intelligent creature used by the native and free Mudokans as a great guide for knowledge and wisdom. Being an immensely wise sage with a variety of abilities and powers, he is a literally massive influencer in the events of Oddworld, striving to bring harmony back to all life after having witnessed the decline of balance and an age of peace that will never come again due to the rise of the industrial forces. Despite his name, the Almighty Raisin is not a dried grape with intense intelligence and power, but is instead based on a tree, the idea being that trees in the real world are very old, having lived through various ages of human history, and if they could talk, would potentially be incredibly wise due to this. Reportedly originating in the northern parts of the continent of Mudos, the Almighty Raisin is described as being seed-like, and he apparently spent the first six millennia of his life as something known as an elder tree, which I assume is just a fancy way of saying a very old tree, either that or he was literally an elder tree, which in the real world is a type of tree that produces elderberries. Eventually, he shed his branches and roots and evolved into the great wise eminent being we meet in Oddworld Munch's Odyssey that has ended up acting as somewhat of a spiritual leader. Interestingly, concept art suggests additional origins and ideas for the character that potentially were discarded, with one piece in which he was originally going to be called the All-Wise Raisin, claiming that he was an early experiment in food processing gone bad. Typical Oddworld right there. I wonder if that's why he's called the Raisin, considering a raisin is a food. Either way, an early idea was that he was going to have been captured by the Vikers, and there was a time of concept art or train him as being tested on and used for experiments. Eventually they would have thrown the raisin out in the trash concerning him to be nothing but rubbish, which I think is probably meant to be very symbolic, these intelligent scientists throwing away a creature with immense wisdom because they don't see his potential and consider him to be garbage. I find this idea quite fascinating as the almighty raisin feels like such a very natural being. The idea of him actually being yet another element of the natural world that was potentially either created or heavily impacted by the industrial world is quite surprising to me. I say potentially created, though maybe that's just me misinterpreting the line an early experiment in food processing gone bad, as suggesting that he was the result of experiments by the Vikers, at least in this piece of concept art, which likely has little or no relevance to the final version of the raisin that appeared in the game. Having been thrown out, the raisin ends up in a rubbish dump, where he would defiantly endure and survive as a prisoner of the industrial forces, surrounded by constant hostility. It's possible, in theory, that the almighty raisin as seen in the final game has been through all this and escaped somehow, as he was intended to play a much bigger role in Munch's Odyssey, then he ended up doing so, and as a result, this whole storyline might have been one of the elements that was simply cut from the final release. Of course, conceivably, it may simply have just been an idea that they just ended up dropping altogether, relegated to the concept stage. As a result of being persecuted by the Magog Cartel and the Vikers Conglomerate, the Almighty Raisin has been forced into hiding, seen as of Oddworld Munch's Odyssey to be residing deep underground in a dark cave. This is the best place for him, being hidden deep under the surface, safe from the destruction of nature on Oddworld above him. Not to mention, essentially being an oracle, the Mudokans consider him and the wisdom he can provide as being incredibly important, with many scenes surrounding him often meditating. As a result, he can surely count on having their protection on his side, the Mudokans of Munch's Odyssey taking on a more active role in defending their lands against aggressors. A final safety measure that I thought about is the fact that just outside Raisin's cave is an entire field of paramites, or at least that side one entrance of it, I don't know why Abe didn't just go back going the way he came instead of running through this dangerous field of paramites. Likewise, I suspect having all these paramites just outside the cave may be yet another deterrent for any dangers that might happen to go near the Raisin's lair. Considering this, I do wonder if there's a closer connection of some kind between Paramites and the Almighty Raisin, as I noticed that his cave is full of cave paintings of, from what I can tell, specifically Paramites and only Paramites. I remember being really interested in looking at these cave markings when I first played the game years ago, but I don't recall noticing until now that it looks to me that every carving is of a Paramites. 
considering this is Mudokun cave art, perhaps this is a warning indicating that there's Paramites around the cave. Or maybe it's symbolising a greater connection between the Raisin and the Paramites. Or maybe it has no specific relevance whatsoever, and Oddworld inhabitants was just like, let's decorate the cave with Mudokun art, and just chose these symbols of Paramites from the first two games, for whatever reason. In designing the cave, they were inspired by Velasco Cave in France that is famous for having paintings on the walls that are thought to be around 17,000 years old. And you can definitely see the similarities. I wouldn't be surprised if these paintings were what the original designs of the Old World cave art from Abe's Odyssey was based on. The Almighty Raisin is a very natural being, full of pure energy he radiates a life force that means he will always be surrounded by life. I guess a bit like the way trees give off oxygen, and that's why humans are able to live on Earth, I think. I'm not a biologist or a scientist. Even in the deepest and darkest of caves, massive trees are able to grow because of him, as well as bright bioluminescent green fungi, fungi, mushrooms, that glow and guide the way for travellers that seek his wisdom to find him, even in the dark. Being probably the oldest character seen in the entire series so far, the Raisin has gained immense wisdom throughout his life, which he passes on in an attempt to bring harmony and peace to Oddworld. By the time of Munch's Odyssey, the Raisin is supposedly 14,400 years old, which is amazing, he doesn't look a day over 14,300. He has been described as essentially being a living totem pole, you know those wooden structures created by the Native American tribes, carved from large trees that were created and used for many reasons, including to recount legends, historical narratives and notable events. So I guess the Almighty Raisin is basically like, what if one of those could actually speak? Actually, it reminds me a bit of those masks from Crash Bandicoot, you know, Aku Aku and Uka Uka or whatever they were called. I guess that's kind of basically what they are as well. Experimenting with ways to reflect his wideness, Oddworld inhabitants considered various looks for the Raisin, such as giving him facial hair that was designed to look like a stereotypical wise old Chinese guy, specifically Master Po from the TV show Kung Fu, in order to instantly imbue his sense of calm wisdom into players as soon as they see him. They tried out various hairstyles to mirror his tree origins, showing hair made of grass and vine-like materials. Looks a bit like dreadlocks to me. And to reflect his intrinsic relationship with the natural world, images were mocked up of the almighty raisin being covered in shamanic markings. In concept art, the raisin's vast longevity would have been demonstrated through carvings on his body, much like how a tree over time might have symbols scratched into its bark by people carving into it, it's another indicator of the prodigious passage of time witnessed by the raisin. In this case, the carvings display what looks like some kind of star chart, potentially the same as that which shows an ancient memory of planetary alignments which is also seen on the main menu screen of Oddworld Abe's Odyssey. As a consequence of having experienced the environment change so much over his existence, the almighty Raisin considers it his primary objective to bring harmony to Oddworld once again, and attempts to influence events as a counterbalance to the invasion of the natural world by the industrial forces. While he may seem somewhat useless aside from his wisdom, considering he's too massive to move without aid, there is somehow far more to the Raisin than his vast knowledge, as he's seen to possess great ability and power, as you'd expect from his name. The true nature and full potential of the Almighty Raisin isn't entirely known. He's such a mystical being, but he gains visions of the future and knows what's going to happen which is likely what you're seeing in the cutscene where he portrays the rise of Lulu and how it's going to happen. It's as a result of his visions that he's actually able to change them, and that's what he's doing here. As of Munch's Odyssey, he perceives the future of Oddworld being very bleak, and that's why he does stuff like send Abe and Munch on missions to fight back and hopefully avoid the future he envisions by influencing events. It is his attempt to subvert the destiny of doom that his premonitions tell him await Oddworld. The Raisin is also known to be able to dislodge his consciousness from his body, allowing his mind to travel about above him, being able to observe into all life on Oddworld. It's this that gives him the godlike qualities of omnibenevolence, as he's incredibly empathetic for all life forms on their planet, including the industrialists. 
even if he disagrees with them and considers them to be enemies, the ones who will bring about the disaster he envisions, he still has complete compassion for them, as an all-loving being should. That being said, he absolutely brutally roasted Lulu. Though still, perhaps the minds of such complicated creatures on both sides, the dilemmas they are causing seem pathetic to the raisin, and he much prefers the perspectives of simpler life forms. It has been said that his favourite thing to do is to connect with and see through the viewpoints of newly born creatures. Being such a great being with such knowledge and foreknowledge, and coming from a time that was far more peaceful and harmonic, the Raisin attempts to avoid the darkness that looms, and seeks to reinstate the balance that once reigned on Mudos. While he has no direct control over reality, he's able to influence it to try to get the best, most peaceful result he can, and I think that includes for the industrialists as well. It's notable that while Abe and Munch do tend to kill a load of Sligs, Vikers and interns on their path to fulfilling the Raisin's requests, he didn't actually tell them to do that. Likewise, as a result of their journey, Vikers Labs blows up, probably killing every Viker, Glocken and Intern, and whoever else was on there inside. That doesn't sound like something a great creature trying to bring peace would want, and indeed, if you notice, even though this was the good ending, the right ending that Raisin was trying to achieve, the part about destroying Vikers Labs wasn't really anything to do with him. It was the Fuzzles that did that, and Munch is the one that freed them, even though Raisin himself didn't actually tell him to, that was completely of Munch's own accord. I'm saying this as I interpret it as being a good example of how although the benevolent Raisin foresees futures and attempts to influence them, he isn't in control of them, and just does his best to bring about the purest peace that he can. It's interesting to note that other inhabitants contemplated giving him a Halo-inspired design, likely to reflect his intense compassion for all living beings. In terms of his power, it should be pointed out that according to the Shaman, the Almighty Raisin is the one that gives Abe the power to possess enemies and creatures from a distance, in gameplay terms, the Possession Orb which was presumably simply done as the necessary adaptation of the 2D gameplay of the first two games of Abe being able to possess enemies on the same screen, transferred over to the 3D realm. The fact that the Almighty Raisin is said to be the reason for Abe suddenly being able to do this, in order to allow him to fulfil the goals the Raisin sets out for him and Munch, suggests further about the Raisin's very close connection to the Mudokans, and his great spirituality and power that he only utilises to fight back against the industrialists. The natives revere the Raisin due to his status as one of the oldest living creatures on Mudos, and respect him immensely. Being such an old being, the Raisin doesn't communicate as clearly as perhaps would be helpful, and spends most of his time sleeping, I mean meditating, hardly having a concept of time and reality as a result. The Mudokans meditate with him and try to gain as much wisdom out of him as they can, as you would with someone that's lived a long time and experienced a lot. It shows how dedicated the natives are to the Almighty Raisin, that a Mudokan shaman is used by him as a servant to spread his messages and advice to those he guides, to bring about the changes he attempts to bring to Oddworld. It has been suggested that the shaman's skin is painted purple as an indication that he works for the Raisin. However, perhaps his most faithful and useful servants are the thousands of rats at his command, as the Raisin is unable to move, he instead projects his consciousness into these creatures and as a result is able to investigate and see pretty much everything that is happening above him on Oddworld, which is how he's able to know so much about what's going on and the events that are taking place in the industrial facilities. So if you've ever wondered while watching the Almighty Raisin tell Abe and his fellow chumps about Munch being taken to Vikers Labs, how he knows this, it's literally shown right there in the cutscenes, he witnessed it happen through his tiny rat friends that act as his eyes and ears, making him omnipresent on Oddworld, allowing him to gather information, strategize, work out his plans, and send out his agents of change to take action. And maybe you already noticed this, but if you didn't, if you just saw this cutscene and didn't think two seconds about the rats on the screen, then consider how effective they must be at infesting factories and laboratories and likewise not being noticed or thought about, instead being ignored by the industrialists just as rats in the real world are, even though there are so many of them about. 
It's quite amazing how incredible the almighty Raisin is, he truly lives up to his name, considering he gains so much knowledge in so many ways. From his immense longevity to his usage of the many creatures, as well as his ability to view through the perspective of every individual on Oddworld. He is surely one of the most important characters in many ways to the Oddworld cause, considering he combines his wisdom and experience with his supernatural powers and ability to attempt to restore peace and harmony to the planet as he once knew it in the days of old. In many ways, he possesses many qualities of a god, being incredibly spiritual and held in great reverence by the Mudokans. He seems to embody the four omnis of god. He's omnipotent, possessing powers that we've hardly even seen yet, including being able to transfer his consciousness and drift his mind through the lands of Oddworld, which means he's ever-present and everywhere, he's omnipresent, and this gives him omniscience. He is all-knowing, he is aware of everything that is going on all the time, and his visions allow him to foresee the many possibilities of the future, and he is personally testimony of the past, being there from the beginning. But perhaps most importantly, all of this has given him omnibenevolence and love of all living things, even those he considers to be misguided and to be doing wrong. Ultimately, being an ancient wise old tree, he's the story keeper of Oddworld and will be there in the end of the story. And as a result, I'd certainly love to find out more from him in future Oddworld games and media to discover the as yet untold stories of the almighty Raisin. Hello, follow me. Mm-hmm. <laughs>